Alrighty, today we get to talk about right triangles and trigonometric ratios. So, to go back to our unit circle, remember that our unit circle was a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1, hence the name unit. So we have the equation x squared plus y squared was equal to 1. All right, that was our radius squared because we're on the unit circle. And we knew that, <clears throat> excuse me, any point on this unit circle corresponded to a point x and y, and we related the x value to cosine and the y value to sine. But our radius was 1. Um, again, here is our angle theta in standard position. So we knew that the cosine was the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is why we're getting the x value of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is 1. Well, this concept can be applied to a circle of any radius. So if you have that circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared, then going along with the same concept, theta in standard position, this is still my x, this is still my y, so to take the adjacent over the hypotenuse gives us the ratio of x over r. So that's where these ratios are all coming from, is thinking about that right triangle on any circle centered at the origin. So before we had the sign was just the y because our r was 1. But again, r can be anything. So you want to remember that sine of theta is equivalent to y over r. Cosine of theta is x over r. Tangent of theta is y over x. And then you take each of those and just flip them to get the reciprocal. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So what kind of question might you be asked about this? For a standard position angle determined by the point negative 5, 12, what are the values of the six trigonometric functions? Well, this is your x. This is your y. So remember your equation of your circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Then that means that negative 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to r squared. So we have 25 plus 144 is equal to r squared and that of course becomes 169 and the square root of 169 is plus or minus 13 but the radius of our circle is always going to be positive so we really only want the positive value because the negative is going to come from whether our x and y values are negative again depending on what quadrant. So you can go strictly off the ratios and the, um, excuse me, strictly off the coordinates and the ratios that we just defined. So if you did that, then that means that the sine of theta is y over r. So that's 12 over 13. And the cosine of theta is equal to x over r, which is negative 5 over 13, and the tangent of theta is equal to y over x, so that's 12 over negative 5, or negative 12 fifths. And then, if you want to find the reciprocal sign, the reciprocal is the cosecant, doesn't start with the same letter, you just flip it. Take the reciprocal, 13 over 12. Okay, the reciprocal of the cosine is the secant. So the secant of theta is negative 13 over 5. And the reciprocal of the tangent is the cotangent. So the cotangent of theta is negative 5 over 12. And there we have given the values of our six trig functions. Bad pox. <laughs> okay, moving right along. To review, because surely you have had this in geometry, okay, remember that that y over r, just like we showed, is the same thing as your opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we take the reciprocal 
and we flip each of those ratios. Okay, so again, let's go see. They all tie in together. Let's go see what kind of problems that we're going to have to work on. All right, we have finding the distance. We have the large glass pyramid at the Louvre in Paris has a square base, and the angle formed by each face of the ground is 49.7 degrees. What is the distance from the center of a side to the base? What is the distance from the center of a side of the base to the top along the lateral face? So what they're asking us for is this distance right here. And if you look in your book, there's a, real, a better picture of it you can see. But they are asking us for this distance. I have an angle. If I know that um, this is 35 meters, then hopefully y'all can see that this is half of 35, which is going to be 17.5. So I have an angle. This, is, this side is adjacent to the angle. This side is the hypotenuse because it is opposite my right angle. So I'm going to say that the cosine of 49.7 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Now to solve that, when you have it in your denominator, put it over 1 and cross multiply. So I have x times the cosine of 49.7 equals 17.5 and then I'm going to divide both sides by the cosine of 49.7 and this is the preferable way especially if you don't have a calculator you can do what you need to and then put it in the calculator at the end so we'll find out that x equals 17.5 divided by the cosine of 49.7 which is 27.05 and I am measuring in meters, so I'm going to say that's 27.1 meters. Okay, another type question you might have is in angle DEF, angle D is the right angle, and the tangent of E is 3 over 4. Okay, so they want to know what the sine of E and what the secant of E, excuse me, secant of F is. Now, when you do these, you can either think of opposite adjacent uh, if you want to or you can think in terms of y and x both of them will work for your right triangle they probably want us to do let's go make our right triangle and we have to name some angle e so this is going to be e d they told me was the right angle and there's f and if the tangent of E is opposite over adjacent, so that means this has to be 3 and this has to be 4. So put it in your Pythagorean theorem, which of course is going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. And you'll find out that C will be 5. And so now I need the sine of E. And the sine, the ratios that we just talked about, is opposite over hypotenuse so my sine is going to be three-fifths and my secant secant relates to the cosine so if my cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse then I'm going to flip it to get my secant this is what cosine is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so secant is hypotenuse over adjacent here's f hypotenuse is five adjacent is 3. So my answer will be 5 over 3. I think the picture is real helpful in solving these kind of problems. Okay, number 4. We have an airplane's angle of descent into the airport is 3 degrees. If the airplane begins its descent at an altitude of 4,000 feet, what is its straight line descent to the airport? Okay, I'm not an artist. I'm a math teacher, but I'm going to attempt to draw an airplane. He's got some wings, and um, he's going down. Now, if they tell us his angle of descent, the angle of descent is always measured from a horizon. So it's going down, and we know that this angle, not drawn to scale, is 3 degrees. Okay? 
and what you're looking for. They also told us that the airplane begins this descent at 4,000 feet, an altitude of 4,000 feet. So that's my right triangle. And I think what they're asking us to find is what is its straight line descent? So they want to know what this distance is to the airplane to get on the ground. So that's my X. So hopefully you remember from your geometry that this line of sight and the ground are parallel. So this angle is an alternate interior angle with this one. And therefore, this angle down here is also 3 degrees. Okay? And that's enough to tell us I have an angle. I have the side opposite, I have the side adjacent. So if I'm dealing with opposite and adjacent, then I'm going to deal with the tangent. Tangent of 3 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So again, we cross multiply. X times the tangent of 3 degrees equals 4,000. And I'm going to divide, so x equals 4,000 divided by the tangent of 3 degrees. So you put that in your calculator and it gives you an answer of 76324.55. And we always go read the question, what is its straight line descent to the airport? We got a word problem. So our answer is going to be 76,320, I'm going to round it to the nearest foot. Uh, that many feet, uh, I'm going to give the answer in feet, it might give it in miles, but uh, since the original problem was in feet, I'm good with leaving the answer in terms of feet. Okay, problem number five, what is the measure of angle A in each triangle? Use a trigonometric ratio. So I'm looking for A, and of course this is opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. So that means I'm going to use the sine function. So the sine of A equals opposite over hypotenuse. All right, now you're going to, we talked about this earlier, uh, you're going to put in your calculator, you're going to type in second, sine, because that brings up the inverse sine, and then it should bring up a parentheses, and you'll hit 4 divided by 10. You can reduce it if you know already, that's fine, but just so you make, don't make any errors. And your calculator, uh, in degrees, we want it, should spit back an angle of 23.58 degrees. Okay, because remember, we're looking, we're using that inverse function and we're looking for the angle. So that's why we're going to use second sign whenever we're looking for the angle. Okay, about C, again, we're looking for angle A. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the cosine this time. Cosine of A <coughs> is equal to 5 over 9. And on my calculator, I will hit second cosine and 5 divided by 9. Okay, if your calculator doesn't put a parentheses, you need to know that number already or make sure you put parentheses around it or you'll get an incorrect answer. Okay, so when you punch that in, your calculator should give you a response of 56.25. If it doesn't, make sure you're in degrees. You might be in radians. Okay. The last problem that we're going to talk about is another one where I have to attempt to draw. An entrance to a building is not wheelchair accessible. The entrance to the uh, the entrance is six feet above ground level and 30 feet from the roadway. Um, how m long must the ramp be for the slope to meet the regulation of one inch rise for every one foot run? Okay, um, this is a key right here because this is telling me about my angle, okay? They're telling me that, you know, the slope of it, I have to have one inch for every foot. So, of course, if we put this in terms of inches, that's 12 inches. 
So the slope of my line, remember, rise over run, okay, um, is 1 inch over 12 inches, okay? But I need to know that angle because what I'm thinking about is I have a, a ramp. I'm six feet above ground, and they're asking me to build a ramp. And I don't know what this ramp is going to be. It's And it, it will be a better looking ramp than what I have here. But I need to know this angle, and this angle is what I'm getting from this information. So from here, to find out that angle, to get the proper slope, um, I need this angle right here. So I'm going to say that the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over 12. Put that in your calculator, second tangent 1 12th, and you'll find out that theta needs to be 4.8 degrees. So this angle is 4.8. And they're asking me how long does the ramp have to be to meet that slope. So this is what we're looking for. Okay, so I have an angle, I have the opposite, and I have the hypotenuse. Opposite and the hypotenuse means I want to use the sine function. So I have the sine of 4.8 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And again, we're going to cross multiply. X times the sine of 4.8 equals 6. So X equals 6 divided by the sine of 4.8. And that gives you on your calculator an answer of 71.7. .7. So the answer to my problem, how long must the ramp be? 71.7, what am I looking for? I'm in terms of feet. So that would be 71.7 feet. And that sums up our right triangles and trigonometric ratios.